What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic here, and is off in the case. My good friend Ryan Muckenhern. Ryan, how are you? Salutations, Mark. I'm, I'm exceptional. We're tackling a big one here. This is a ten minute talk. We probably should not have scheduled this as a ten minute talk because this argument could go on forever. Oh, it's going to be a knockout drag out. We're talking about match ammo for hunting. Maybe match versus hunting ammo for hunting. You can't talk about one without the other, so you got to have them both here. Yeah. Um, you can go online, do a simple Google search. I just did this. I Googled match ammo for hunting. I found like articles, things sitting right next to each other, and the results, like one was basically, you should never use match ammo for hunting, and if you're thinking about it, you're an idiot crazy person the next one is singing the praises and the effectiveness effectiveness of match ammo and you know good to go mm-hmm. and probably in somewhere lies um a little bit of it of that depends as as is often the case but uh let's unpack match ammo ryan let's talk about match ammo at first maybe what makes a match bullet you know quotation mark match bullet different than a quotation mark hunting bullet the two examples we have here um, on the table, if you're not watching, we have the uh, uh, Hornady ELDM 6.5 Creed. These are 140s. 140. And a bullet that, uh, or you know, ammunition slash bullet that probably couldn't be more of a polar opposite. One of your favorites, Ryan. Mm-hmm. What? What? Uh, that was. Uh, was. Uh, this is that was leading. This you know? is the uh, factory loaded Barnes ammunition, uh, Vortex, no affiliation. Um, Six point five Creedmoor loaded with the one hundred and twenty seven grain Barnes LRX. LRX. Yeah. Now we were actually shooting a rifle. Every every rifle likes. Oftentimes rifles yeah. like something different. Now I will say we were shooting one of your six five Creedmoors yep. just the other night. It actually yep. was a lovely Friday. Ryan. It was. It was a good time. We we you know Mark and I sat down. We had a soda. We did. Before we even started shooting, I haven't had a soda in months. Last time I th- had a, like a real soda, I think I was with you, and that was a long time ago. Yeah, because we both looked at the fridge, like you know, that will be naughty. It was Friday. It was a Sprite. It was a Seven Up. Oh, it's the same. Oh, I mean, yeah, actually, I'm not. Yeah. Even. Um, a clear, a clear soda with, uh, you know, citrus scent. Where I was going with that, though, yeah. was that rifle liked this particular ammo so much, it was delivering match-grade accuracy. Oh, it's one hole, yeah. Um, now, maybe it doesn't have, like, the ultra-high sexy BC and, you know, like like the ELDM uh, here, but as far as, like, accuracy at 100 yards, it's quite impressive. Um, anyway, so let's talk about a match bullet. Yeah. What, what makes a match bullet a match bullet? Um, I think when we unpack that a little bit, usually we're seeing a thinner jacket Mm -hmm. than we would find. And this is specifically the cup and core bullet. So lead core, copper jacket or copper alloy jacket. Usually it's a thinner taper jacket. Um, Bullet profile is very long and sleek. So we're getting a generally higher BC. Mm -hmm. Uh, And these bullets are going to be denoted for typically target and competition use. Mm -hmm. Uh, We bleed some lines. We get into some like law enforcement and military sniping applications perhaps. Uh, But generally speaking, very high QC and and very high attention to detail in the design of the projectile to lend itself extraordinarily accurate at distance. I mean, it's designed yeah. for like you said QC QC like um, from bullet to bullet. Yeah, yeah. Like very little variance. Yep. Uh, yeah. Like I, you said, high BC. It's going to pass yeah. through the air very efficiently. Correct. Uh, maximizing long range performance. But also, like you said, thinner jacket, mm-hmm. not necessarily designed to mushroom. Yes, well, designed to mushroom. Well, that depends. Um, some caveats. Just caveats with every side of the fence that you're on in this one. So, do we just do we just step into the old caveat corral and? Yes, please. Do. Okay, I don't hunt with match bullets. I have hunted with match bullets. I've killed some of the largest pronghorn and mule deer uh in my career with match bullets i absolutely prefer to hunt with a bullet designed for hunting um because i generally don't encounter distances that um would be conducive 
for success. I'm not gonna say, see, every time I say this, I think I'm downing on these match bullets. I guess what I'm saying is that the distances I hunt and the shot angles that I have been forced to take, um, a bullet designed for weight retention um, and to you know punch through things like bone, hide, maybe penetrate very long distances relative to the critter's anatomy, I found better luck with those, better success with those. Um, the critters that I've killed with match bullets are all very dead. I have eaten them completely. Mm-hmm. I feel more comfortable and confident when I'm using a bullet designed for weight retention, penetration, bone crush, all that. Now, with that, I, I've heard people say like different schools of thought. Yeah. When using match bullets, I've heard people say, oh, don't aim for structure. Correct. And then I've heard people say, no, aim for structure. Depends on that structure. I'm, I guess I'm, I'm specifically speaking to the front shoulder. Different schools of thought. I want to caveat the hunting ammo, though, so I don't, so I don't um, dismiss match profile bullets for hunting. So there's no secret here. I love Barnes bullets. I love the Tip TSX. I love the LRX. I have a, I have a long and storied history with these projectiles, and they have never done me wrong. If there's one thing they don't do when we compare them with a bullet like the ELDM, the ELDX. Um, some of those high BC, um, you know, thinner jacketed projectiles that are out there is they don't expand at lower velocities. Right. So this is something that you have to be extremely cognizant of if you're going to be using them for hunting, because the inverse effect, uh, like I've, I've enjoyed them tremendously. The inverse effect here is they don't expand, um, large enough, like relative to their caliber to, potentially do any disruptive tissue damage on the internals of the animal. And so you, you have a completely opposite effect of what you initially... When they start to run out of a little gas correct. at distance. Yep. Yeah. And because of their construction and they're, they're you know, intrinsically and innately str- a stronger bullet that's by design... Oh, this is an all-copper projectile, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They require more impact velocity to initiate that expansion. So the further you go with them, generally, the worse it gets. So I... I cap myself at a yardage of like a distance of engagement based on what my impact velocity is. Now, what about, um, okay, let's, this is the example we have here, right? Um, would love to have them all. That would be impossible. Um, but like, let's say, um, okay. Uh, let's say if this was a 140 uh, Acubond or if this was a, uh, a Swift Scirocco or a, um, gosh, I mean, name them, right? I yep. mean, uh, a uh, a terminal ascent, sure, very popular bullet, right? Um, I'd say similar profile, but not all copper projectiles. How are those going to behave at distance? Uh, a little bit of middle ground. Okay. So with, with some of those projectiles you mentioned, you might afford yourself um, a little extra distance when we're still getting reliable mechanical expansion of that projectile. Um, maybe not to the degree that you would with the match profile bullet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And so then to caveat the match profile bullet, um, if I was going to be encountering shots that were outside of what, say, my use of Barnes would dictate my maximum, if I was going to be encountering shots there, I definitely would not be using the Barnes. That, oh, that mm-hmm. would be like a, a potential recipe for disaster. I would be pursuant of something like an ELDM or an ELDX, both of which I've used to kill game. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, both of the examples here are six five Creedmoor. Yes. Um, what would you say? Like, we'll say on deer sized game. I guess because I want to because we're talking about these extended ranges where like this might not be where the barns might not be the best choice. But like, where I mean, where do you think this starts to fall off? Where you're like, yeah, I'm probably gonna limit myself to X range. Six hundred. So still pretty far for practical. Yeah. For a lot of practical hunting. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. I guess I wanted to kind of... I also don't think that that's where the Hornady starts to work. I think it starts to work way before then. Gotcha. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything here is contingent on impact velocity. Right. So if too high, with any match profile bullet, you run the risk of potentially having um, like a, a lack of penetration. 
or delamination and deconstruction of the projectile from a core and, and jacket um, perspective. And depending on where that bullet's placed, and, and this is probably where we're going to go to next, that may be the desired result. You might end up with a lightning fast kill. Right. Depending on where that bullet is placed, you might end up with something less than spectacular. So I think that when you're selecting a projectile, we should take into consideration what is that projectile designed to do and at what velocities. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of information out there surrounding this. A lot of it comes in the form of like anecdotal reports from the field from folks who may feel that a bullet um, did them wrong. But I believe that a huge majority of those situations are very situational in which probably the wrong projectile used for the wrong application. Right. On, on both sides, because I've, I've had people that know that I'm a uh, Barnes, and, and not, I'm a huge Barnes fan, but just monolithics or homogenous bolt designs in general, I'm a huge fan of. Using them inappropriately and be like, no, those things don't expand. Well, what distance? Okay, so like what would be, I mean, we've both done a lot of hunting. Yeah. Like you could be hunting the open landscapes of the West yeah. and still take, you know, a 50-yard, 20, 30, 40, 50-yard shot at a mule deer. Yep. I mean, you're not saying that you wouldn't choose the barns for no, that. No, I'm going to pick that. Yeah, it's going to do great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I think I was misunderstanding what you're saying. Um, yeah, so like, why, okay, I want to make this about me, but why I choose those bullets is because I'm more apt to take the 50-yard shot than I am to take the 750-yard shot. So I'm going to select a bullet that can handle that 50-yard shot, give me the performance that I want. So not, not that the performance of another bullet is bad. It's just not what I want. I want an entrance and an exit, if at all possible, from just about any angle that I can be presented that shot. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm pursuant of when I'm hunting. Um, and regardless of what's in between. So like if I have to go through a shoulder, I can do that. If I have to go, for, go through a femur, which I've had to do, I can do that. Um, but I then cap myself at kind of the longer end of things. Mm -hmm. And part of that is like a, a checkpoint for me, like, okay, it's too far. My bullet may not do what it's supposed to do, probably won't do what it's supposed to do at that distance. And it's also kind of a long ways away. And as much shooting as I do, I'm just not, I'm just not into doing that long range stuff mm -hmm. personally for my own ability. So different schools of thought. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll say this, like I, in general slash the majority, fall into a similar camp as you. Like that's the type of performance that I'm looking for from a projectile. You look at people, I was on this forum the other day, kind of like researching this topic for yeah. the podcast. And I wish I could, I was going to write down, I think I distracted the name of the forum. I think it was either a bunch of um, New Zealand boys or UK boys, or it might have even been like a, a, co a conglomerate, right? Yeah. But th they were nearly 100% in the camp of using match bullets for all applications. Oh, I get it. And, yeah. you know, you hear things like, I mean, like almost like, I can't understand the way that you and I might think, why do you want to make this bullet go through the animal leave the animal and you're wasting you're wasting so much when you could just be dumping it all right in um, can i contradict myself please okay so here's 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 my take on um using match ammunition for hunting a lot of times the stuff shoots unbelievably well right so when we do when we do accuracy validation here at vortex uh, for like warranty purposes or testing etc or when we're doing like long range events things like this, we're not using hunting bullets for that. We're using match ammunition. The, uh, the ability to shoot better is it comes in hand with this ammunition, right? So if I'm pursuant of utmost accuracy and consistency over any smattering of distances, that's the ammunition of choice. So if I use that logic, that means that I have a higher probability of placing that projectile exactly where it needs to go mm -hmm. with less opportunity for error than I would with anything else. Now the argument is like, is that a more ethical choice? Because that bullet has a higher chance of impact in the exact spot that it's supposed to go than something else. 
point for the match bullet, right? Right. And if we're very selective on where we take our shots, which as hunters, we should be very selective as to where we place our bullets, a match bullet is going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Even, even you know, thin jackets aside, uh, if you put a projectile that does any kind of expansion in the right spot, the result is a dead critter. Um, and, and I've seen it time and again. And so if I have a bullet that, I'm going to use the word explosive, not explosive as an in incendiary, but explosive um, behavior on target, like it, it's coming apart and delaminating, and I'm able to tuck that bullet into exactly the right spot, cataclysm will ensue inside of that thing that I'm shooting, and it is very dead, and so it's a very appealing projectile to use. You get all the benefits right up front until you start running into less than optimal shot angles, heavy bone. So do you wait? Do you wait for your shot opportunity? If that shot opportunity doesn't occur, do you pass? There's the debate. Yes. So my, like right, wrong, or otherwise, like I said, I fall into a similar camp slash philosophy as you. I would rather take uh, the versatility of having confidence in, you know, any acceptable shot angle yep. versus maybe some increased distance. Sure. Um, That's a tough I'm, one, man. I want the ability for that bullet to drive through, like a hard quartering two or quartering away shot. I want that bullet to drive, and, you know, if it's quartering away, man, let's hit that thing mid-ribs and, you know, let's go through the offside shoulder, you know. Um, I like... I like what that affords me. But again, I'll go back to folks that say, you're just, wait. yeah, that's great. Why don't you tuck the match bullet in the ribs and watch it collapse? And it's, it's not invalid. Right. It's not invalid. I and, and maybe it is just, maybe it just, you know, something that sticks in my head is a higher risk or something. Or like maybe I think I'm going to lose opportunities that I haven't been presented and and the you know the big debate is well can you wait that extra three seconds for that that animal to go full broadside or or present a more um, open rather than less obscure shot in or obscured shot into um, those vitals what, what what is better or what is worse I guess is up to the user to decide mm-hmm. um, that's a tough call I've shot two animals with match ammo one was a Sitka blacktail. I think it was about about like 200 yard shot, something like that. Uh, that was a 308 federal gold medal match. Uh, killed it dead right there. I mean, just boom, flop, tip over. Right. It was hard quartering two. I actually, or I guess you know, semi hard quartering two. I hit uh, actually behind, like just kind of tucked it. I didn't hit the point of the shoulder. I tucked it right behind the shoulder. It quartered through, came back, you know, like, I don't know, mid-ribs on the other side or something like that. Um, the other, so that would have been like, you know, 200 yards, 308, like I said, um, gold medal match, did great. Uh, I was shooting some Hornady uh, A-maxes out of a 6.5 Creedmoor at a mule deer that was probably 650. Now, here I'll caveat this because I think actually my first shot wasn't the best shot. I think I hit it probably, you know, maybe about mid body or something like that. I I, I don't. It was several years ago. Anyway, uh, hit that deer four times. End result got him right. And so I'll kind of put the. I think I put that deer on high alert, and I think it had a lot of adrenaline. And I think had I probably put that first shot where I should have, maybe it wouldn't have taken as much you sure. know so the yeah the, i don't know the right. question is is like was that a function of the projectile right and maybe that's an undefinable um and and, and we'll never know the answer to it um this is why i like to do a lot of necropsies i like to cut stuff apart in layers i like to see what a projectile was doing on its way in on its way through and then for me personally hopefully on its way out and i like to see what's going on on the inside um, that's tough. That's tough, man. I, you know, and okay. So I'm, I'm going to paint another picture here. I've got like, a, it's like, what if, what if, what if, what if this scenario, what if that scenario, like I could possibly argue like, Hey, 
we want every shot to be perfect. Not yeah. every shot is perfect, right? Yep. So if I'm sh- shooting a, uh, you know, let's say a tougher bonded or a monolithic like the Barnes here, and I make a bad shot right through the punch, boom. I don't think it makes any difference. Unless that, unless the angle, like the trajectory into the thoracic cavity would have led you into something good. If it was right into the into the guts, it's right well, into the well, guts. I guess, and then again, now I'm just theorizing, but like maybe a match bullet that, you know, maybe comes apart a little bit, maybe rapid expansion, maybe multiple projectiles, potentially cause, I mean, I'm not going to plan, I don't want to plan for a bad shot, right? right? But would have that been more effective in this hypothetical situation? Mm, I don't know. Would a baseball size hole out the opposing side have been better than something that didn't get through to anything on the other side? That's t- I've I've seen that I've seen that before. Um, you know where you, you you have a rotten shot, but because you have an entrance and an exit, and you have an opportunity for air in and blood out two ways, a rotten shot ends up being not that bad. Um, but that's a tough, I mean, it's still a rotten shot. Like, I think we as hunters chalked that one up as like, well, that did not go as planned. Right. Um, yeah, you're coming out heavy, but you're not happy about it. Um, you're happy you got them, disappointed in yourself. Correct, yep. Yep. Um, but it's, a, it's a tricky thing. I here's, <clears throat> here's, here's, I think, an important thing to note, and I, I think I guess I've already said this. The ammunition that shoots best in your gun is the most appropriate ammunition to use. And that, so we were on the range the other night, Mm-hmm. Getting you spun up for a bear hunt, and we had a match grade ammunition that did not shoot as good as a quote hunting style projectile, right? Like one is marketed as a long range precision esque round. Sure, it did not perform to the same degree that this particular load did. The better choice there would be this particular load. If the inverse had occurred and this shot poorly and that other bullet shot very well 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 dang it that's the one to use uh if you have the if you have the ability to well i'd say but the mat like it wasn't match ammo it was kind of a it's a high bc long range precision hunting round yes yes and because that gun just simply doesn't like it. it has nothing to do with the ammunition itself just that particular gun does not care for it um that would have been a recipe for disaster. If you were hanging the attributes and merits of, quote, match profile hunting or match profile ammunition for hunting, that would have been a, a bad starting point because it just didn't shoot that good in the gun in the first place. Well, it, defeat, it defeated the purpose Correct. of going with that style of bullet, which I'd say oftentimes does work famously. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like you said, it was just the, you know, the gun and... Uh, in that situation, it's like, well, boy, the obvious choice. Yes. You know, let's yes. let's pick the one that's going exactly where you want to put it. And it was going in one hole at 100 yards. Yes. Very impressive. And I, I think a lot of this then also falls on, on the shooter. And then the, the mindset and the, the ethos that that shooter, that shooting community has. So you had mentioned um, this this group of folks in a geographical region that preferred a particular style of projectile. It was resounding yes it was they could not fathom yep. the philosophy that you and i would subscribe to sure and and i get that too so culture it plays a lot into this right so you see people glom onto regionally well we see this with optics like oh sure high magnification tripod mounted binoculars the american southwest mm-hmm. we sell a lot of those kaibabs and, and razor hd uhd 1856 is down there. Yep. That's a big thing. I don't hunt dissimilar terrain when I'm hunting in Wyoming or Nebraska or the Dakotas for that matter, but it's just you don't see that that often down there. Uh, in the American Southwest, you do. I think a lot of those shooters um, as a community have, have kind of developed a practice and then put into practice at very successfully this means of take. Um, Something, and I think if you if you were hopping around that forum or you were watching any videos, they're very selective about where they put their bullets. And sometimes they're not in the regular spots that we would put bullets, um, at least what we're taught here in the U.S. Talking to some of my friends in the U.K. Uh, and Europe, um, the head and neck is not off limits and oftentimes is targeted. Right. And because they're using ammunition like Hornady ELD in the factory loaded or hand loaded, their, their confidence placing that projectile exactly there 
is very high and they are very effective and very effective. Right. If you, placing a bullet at the neck shoulder junction and severing the spine forward of the shoulder but into the neck region, ooh, that is lights out. And that's what you'd, they'd, you'd, you'd hear like, yeah, why would I, you know, essentially, I think, aim behind the shoulder, mm-hmm. have a bolt that's tough enough to punch through, watch the animal run off, which is likely going to be, I'd say, between 20 and 100 yards sure. uh, with a good shot. Like, why would I do that when I can just have it dead right there? Sit down right there. Correct. Yep. And and I think that's very interesting. In fact, we were having this conversation on the range. Why is it that, you know, our school of thought states that that bullet should place be placed behind the shoulder or on the shoulder? Why isn't it on the neck or the head? Is it because it's a smaller, higher risk target? Perhaps. Well, the match ammunition somewhat addresses that, as does the shooting culture there. Right. Guys are nuts about accuracy. They are nuts about shot placement. And like to the nth degree. Well, and these folks are living in places, or at least some of them, where potentially you are shooting a lot of critters oh, annually. Yeah. Yes. Stuff that we would be like, huh? Yep. You know, you might hunt you hunt all year for a lot of guys. You're like, man, I got I got my buck. Yep. You might shoot a bunch of whatever's in a single day perhaps correct yeah there's a a a possibility that just the frequency of gain that you encounter on your given hunt allows you to be more selective and again that's not an excuse for taking a a shoddy shot or a risky shot no um which is not what i'm advocating or saying um but if if you're out like like i get one maybe two pronghorn hunts a year one maybe two mule deer hunts a year i might get an opportunity one Mm -hmm. um and it may be fleeting and i want a bullet that can address that at that point in time yeah i mean you pose an interesting thought there like that if that's your one opportunity Mm -hmm. at least having the ability to make nearly any good angle a good shot you know if you're getting i'm again i'm hypothetical like 10 opportunities in a day you can wait and go, eh, well, it didn't turn how I liked and it walked off. Whatever. Sure. You know, sure. your season didn't hinge on it. Sure. Yep. I don't know. I'd like to talk to one of these guys. Not And not in a uh, any sort of like combative no, way. Like, I'm just like truly interested. Like it's so, th- the schools of thought are different. The end result, I think, for both are the same yep. oftentimes, but maybe some different practices like we're talking about. It is very, it is very interesting. You know, like I said, a lot of this comes down onto what what your expectation for a projectile is, which is where I think I gravitate towards one over the other, and then two, your ability as a shooter and your comfortability as a shooter. Like, if your ability, or excuse me, if your expectation meshes well with the projectile and your ability, um, then carries that expectation down at distance. Um, you know, what are you comfortable doing? You know. If you if you have that hard quartering shot and you don't know that the projectile that you're running is going to hold up enough through whatever part of the body you're trying to drive it to get to, do you take the neck shot? Do you take the head shot? I don't know. I don't know. It's all interesting stuff. It is. And I, I think hopefully we can um, find somebody to talk to because as we do with the podcast, it's all about learning oh yeah and i and i love hearing from other people who are doing at the end of the day the same thing differently yep and i just think there's always something to learn and something you you might glean from it you might not change what you do but oh interesting interesting perspective though interesting perspective Yeah. yeah um so did we answer the question originally match bullets v quote hunting bullets I don't know. I don't know either. Do we have <laughs> Do we have more to do? Well, I think, I think we should talk to a few more folks. I think there's a difference, right? Right. We we've gotten over that. Which one's right or wrong? Well, I guess that depends. I guess that depends. Yeah. yeah. I still know where I fall, you know, in my personal line of thinking. Sure. But is that just personal bias? You know. Well, I think it's a learned and a conditioned thing. So you. I, You've learned this through experience. You've been conditioned to this 
through conditioning. There, I just said the same thing twice. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you use conditioner? I don't. Me either. No. I just use bar soap. I guess I don't know what conditioner think really think does. Weird. I think if you have long hair, it makes a difference. Oh, with no. my daughters, uh, conditioner very important. Because the snarlies. Yeah, oh, I see. When I had long hair, I didn't even use conditioner. Maybe you should have. I don't know. Maybe you'd still have those just glowing, glowing locks. Um, well, we digress here. Uh, listeners out there, what are you using for hunting ammunition? Uh, are you a, a match a- ammo advocate and have seen just grand success? Uh, you more of a, a, a you know a bonded bullet, traditional cup and core, monolithic? You know what are you seeing there? Uh, do you want us to explore this further? Inter- I've, interview I've, a few folks, maybe some folks from across the pond. I don't know. I want to explore this further. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Even if you don't want us to, I don't know. Comment below, and until next time. Happy hunting and accurate shooting and accurate hunting. Because you got to be accurate to hunt effectively. Yes. All right. Goodbye, everybody. See ya.